Leading a large organization is full of high stakes situations, situations that can make or break a company. But in some cases, a company's livelihood isn't the only thing on the line. Sometimes, and this is not hyperbole, the entire world is relying on the decisions you make. There's 200-ish thousand people being added to the population every day. So how are we supposed to feed all of the new people with the same amount of land? Alicia Herman is a global supply chain strategy and innovation partner at Bayer Crop Sciences. Alicia and her team are on a mission to make sure the world doesn't starve, a problem that quite literally gets harder to solve by the minute. The world population increases by three people every second. By the end of this episode, that's more than 5,000 new mouths to feed. And while the population increases every day, the world's farmable landmass is actually decreasing. The stakes are high, and obstacles like infestations, soil erosion, supply chain issues, legislation, trade, and climate change add real wrinkles to the problem at every turn. But there's no slowing down. We need to move fast because babies are still being born and people still need to eat. How do you address a global problem that's constantly becoming more complicated? And what is Bayer Crop Science's X Factor that allows it to keep feeding the world against all odds? I'm Jeremy Bergeron, and this is Business X Factors. Each and every week, we'll take an inside look at the secret sauce that takes companies to the highest levels of success and how they got there. We'll explore how these organizations are run and what's so special about the people, the culture, and the processes that make it all happen. We all need to eat. And I know for me, I can take for granted the food in my fridge. But there is a long and complex supply chain to get that food from the farm to the crisper in my fridge. It's a process that's new to me, but common knowledge for someone as experienced as Alicia. I have a, a background in global trade, so I, I really had that whole understanding of where the supply chain works and a constant passion for that. Before Alicia was on a mission to help feed the world in a sustainable and equitable way, she worked as a consultant at one of the big four accounting firms. She loved the excitement of working on new and innovative technology platforms, but it had its challenges too. At times, she didn't like the culture, and every day she felt like she had to prove to others that she should be taken seriously. One of the things that I heard in one of the meetings, one of the, the partners in the room talked to another partner in the room and said, I didn't know you had a shiny new toy while I was standing in the room. It was moments like those that Alicia says a certain strength was forged, a strength that allowed her to succeed. The personal giant would be to have confidence in myself, to just be in the room with these other people and really know my value in there and, and what I have to offer and just stay the course there. She stayed tough and expanded her expertise in global trade. But soon enough, her other passions were calling her. She wanted to help people. She always has. I just really want to help where I can, where there's a need. If it's a neighbor, just write a car, just do something else to give somebody else some smiles. And then I feel like it helps me to bring a sense of joy to myself. The joy was hard to find in the accounting world though. And then she saw a position at Bayer Crop Science open up. This role and the company mission just really spoke to me when I started interviewing for it. Alicia was drawn in by Bayer's commitment to a global mission, a commitment to help transform the agriculture industry with science, data, and technology. The company was on an ambitious path, and it was already having a massive impact throughout the world. It was exactly what Alicia wanted to be a part of. She joined Bayer a year ago, and today, She's playing a vital role on those big projects that attracted her to the company in the first place. Projects like 
trying to eradicate hunger and climate change, making farms more sustainable, and ensuring that farms bring prosperity to everyone. Her team at Bayer is getting to tackle some of the oldest and newest problems that farmers and everyone else along the global supply chain face. Whatever the problem may be, Bayer is working on a solution for it. And here's the thing. When it comes to feeding the world, there are no small problems. Anything that's outdoor is obviously affected by climate, weather, infestations, diseases, that sort of thing. That is a risk that farmers have been dealing with forever. So that's not anything new. Climate change would be now a focus for farmers, and that comes along with sustainability. So how can we be more sustainable farming? So irrigation solutions, what sort of fertilizing are we using? Can we reduce carbon? That sort of thing. And if those massive elements weren't enough, Bayer is also trying to solve other macroeconomic issues as well, including helping smaller scale farms participate sustainably in the market. So anybody in Africa, India, anything that's less than 20 hectare acres is considered smallholder farmers. So these are just family farms that are feeding villages and really understanding how we can help them to get a high yield in the crop, how to plant, what, what goes along the cycle in the planting season, that sort of thing. Again, not an easy task. But even in that pales in comparison to the one true problem that Bayer is ultimately trying to solve. There's 200-ish thousand people being added to the population every day. So how are we supposed to feed all of the new people with the same amount of land? That's mm. you know, the biggest sort of challenge there is. It sounds like an almost impossible task. An exponentially growing population with a finite and actually decreasing amount of land mass. But there is in fact hope. Hard problems require creative solutions. And for Bayer, that means not focusing on growing more food, but instead doing more with what we already have. The average yield for farmers over over the years, it has grown fourfold what they can do with the same amount of land. But once we have the food grown, how do we preserve it so either the crop isn't what you expected it to be or it never makes it to market? In India, 40% of crops never made it to the market. This makes the supply chain a wildly relevant part of feeding the world. As Alicia said, India is literally growing enough food. And yet, there is still massive hunger issues in India and other countries because what's being grown never makes it from farm to table. And I mean that in the most non-hipster way possible. Let's take the apple in my fridge. How does it get to me? From the farmer who plants the tree to the picker who picks the apple to the quality control center to the packaging, shipping, unloading, stocking, and selling, that single apple is on a journey of its own. And if one step in the process is disrupted, or if one part of the system breaks down, everyone is affected along the way. Supply chain solutions and visibility are essential, which is why Bayer is using advanced machine learning and AI to solve logistical issues like food waste and tracking and tracing crop life cycles. For example, blockchain, as Alicia says, is more than just a buzzword. It's something Bayer is actively using in a partnership with Bushel called Trace Harvest. It is an agriculture track and trace solution. Mm. Essentially, we can use seeds and track and trace them all the way from the creation of the seed to the distribution to the farmer, to the harvest, and then all the way to the process and refinery and beyond. So we can follow one little tiny seed to see where it ends up, and you will have a whole host of information um, surrounded by that. Thanks to blockchain, everyone on the supply chain can trace that apple in my fridge back to its origins as a tiny seed. It's data that not only helps consumers understand what they are eating, but actually helps farmers plan for the future. 
We are planning ahead as much as we can to understand what our planting intentions for a few years out from now. What do we think is going to happen in with pathogens or what do we think even from a legal or regulatory shift might happen? So we are looking at all of that and planning the best we can through the R&D pipeline, through ERP upgrades, through innovation. But part of it, you can only plan so much, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody accounted for the pandemic. After the break, we learn how Bayer accelerated innovation despite a disruption no one saw coming. Plus, Alicia tells us how Bayer's fail fast mentality is helping drive them towards the future. And we uncover Bayer Crop Science's X Factor. Stay with us. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic affected the global supply chain overnight. Remember the 2020 toilet paper shortages? This was actually a supply chain issue. There was always enough toilet paper to go around, but there was simply not a logistical plan in place to meet the unexpected higher demand. The same thing happens with food. And it's the reason that Alicia and her team at Bayer needed to take a serious look at the current state of supply chains and think about their future. The pandemic spurred innovation acceleration or digital transformation acceleration. So what was already in the forefront of Bayer's mind is now just accelerated into the plans, into the strategic goals for each of the years. So I think with Industry 4.0 and the pandemic and watching the different supply chains and understanding how complicated they are, it's really just a time to, to reset and focus and work on your transformation story. But as with every other massive challenge, Bayer is approaching supply chain transformation without hesitation. And the team is taking a practical, science, data and technology-based approach to make the impossible seem doable and also kind of fun. We are looking at macro trends, obviously, but all of the macro trends will not correlate to what we're working on from a digital strategy. First and foremost, everyone is looking at Digital Twin and what they can do with a a copy of their platform to do predictive analytics, cognitive thinking, that sort of thing. So we're working on those things, but we're also working on fun things like how to give virtual tours, right? So there are lots of options for that. How do we make sure that we can give a virtual tour to a classroom or do a supplier auditor with no one being on site? We're really trying to look at all the different technologies that are coming out from a consumer side, like QR codes, drones. What are all of those things that companies are coming up with that either give us a competitive edge or keep us competitive based on our back end that we have in our platform? These are exciting times of innovation at Bayer, but fear and excitement are two sides of the same coin. There are a lot of real-world necessities at stake. Alicia and Bayer have to keep pushing innovation forward. So, how does she stay on top of trends to keep moving things ahead? The answer shouldn't surprise you, since it's at the heart of everything Bayer does. She gathers data. I like to listen a lot. So I join groups with economists, with university teachers, just to really understand what are the challenges that are coming and how are you dealing with them, really, almost like innovation exchanges. I like to know about other industries. How is the oil and gas industry affecting what might happen with us to to really understand macro trends, join like supply chain world conferences, tech crunch. We work with different uh, ventures. I would say 40% of my time at least is just researching and understanding Mm. uh, technology and then how it can apply to what we're trying to do from a strategy and goal perspective. Mm. So you said something there that I have noticed. So in this show, I've interviewed some absolutely ridiculous human beings, just like you, across industries, like massive companies, massive brands. And that's something that they all have said is that they listen. They've really curated this ability. They've cultivated this ability to listen. And especially in your space, it's super important. I see that where you have to balance this with like really paying attention and then filtering that through. And then also, of course, executing. And then what you're executing on is is global at scale. 
Every leader I talk to is an exceptional listener, but they also take what they hear and turn an idea with potential into a practical solution. This is exactly what happens every day at Bayer Crop Science, because that's the only way to solve this global problem we've been talking about. In order to get to the right solution, Bayer encourages everyone from Alicia on down to follow one simple practice, fail fast. Get to a minimum viable product as quickly as possible, look at that data, and then decide to chase it some more or pivot. Everyone must let the data be their guide and use the company's immense R&D resources to achieve that massive mission statement Alicia latched onto, helping people by shaping the future of agriculture. One of my personal milestones is just helping one of the partners with an irrigation solution and seeing the minimum viable product come to fruition and proof of concepts and then uh, seeing how that adopted through other parts of the organization when they found out the solution was something that they could also tap into. So mm. it just felt good to know, hey, what we built is actually helping. Alicia is getting to make the difference that she's always wanted to. And the team at Bayer Crop Sciences is making that possible. Why are they doing this and how? What is the X factor that allows them to solve impossible challenges? They never settle. We found new either R&D products or new digital solutions, but we're not finished yet. It's always science first and how are we advancing? That's why there's such a great input for funding for R&D, but it doesn't stop there. It's with the whole company embedded. So digital farming, future of farming, it's always what's next for us. Good enough for now is never good enough for Bayer. The data and science that drives everything Bayer does always points toward new problems that need to be solved. It's a hamster wheel of challenges, but it's a never-ending journey that Alicia and everyone else is happy to be on. And that's the point. They never quit. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for that. You've been listening to Business X Factors brought to you by Highland. To learn more about Bayer Crop Science Division, check out Bayer.com. And if you like this show, and I know you do, make sure you subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast app. We'd be so grateful if you rated and reviewed us on Apple Podcasts as this helps ensure that more listeners like you find the show. Thanks for listening. I'm Jeremy Bergeron, and I'll catch you next time on Business X Factors.